Tim goes asterisk in rucksack and rifle, or should that be sac a do a fusee? He's stalking French wild boar. Plus three generations, one beating line. We go backstage to see what goes into making a good British shoot tick. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. After the crazy horseback antics of Argentina, Tim's next rucksack and rifle adventure has taken him to France for a walked up wild boar and the chance of a red stag. Can you imagine the weight? It's just half of it. And no, not that one. <laughs> Our hosts are Jean-Philippe Beauneuf, aka JP from France, and his fiancée Desiree Lance from Sweden. Both have hunting in their blood and they've promised to give Tim a fast and furious French hunting fest. Three weeks ago we were in Argentina, rushing after a wild boar in the middle of the, the plains on horseback. Absolutely mad, mental, dangerous. And now we're in France, we're invited by JP. And we are doing two things. We are going to be hunting the red stags. Their, their rut has just started. And also we're doing some uh, boar hunting. Very often people think boar hunting is driven or it's from a high seat. We're doing walk and stalk boar hunting. Whilst it won't be perhaps quite as mad and dangerous as Argentina, I'm really hoping for some really, really fantastic hunting. Tim has yes, been here once before for a media event. JP has arranged, lodge and of course yeah, hunting to deliver top class corporate state. days for the you shooting industry. And it must be good as they filmed Wild Boar Fever 44 here. No, that's a joke. Wild Boar Fever 7. So one thing they won't be short of is boar. For UK people, you do not, you do not have a lot of wild boar. You try to get some, but not a lot. And I think it's really good fun because uh, when the pheasant season is over by end of January, we can hunt uh, wild boar till end of March here, and it's really good fun. Walk and stalk, driven hunt, and for the lazy people, we can wait on the high seat uh, at night. <laughs> the lazy people. <laughs> also, you get a lot of uh, you, you get a lot of pleasure because sometimes, hopefully, we'll see that. You will get the wild boars, they come to you, they come very close and you are really in contact with the animal and that provides you a lot of emotion. That's the beauty of this place, boar on the doorstep. Well, five hours from Calais and it will bring out the inner asterisks and obliques in you. <laughs> Our first outing is actually 20 kilometres down the road at JP's friend's place. Why go there? Why wouldn't you? It's quite a pile. The estate is a firm favourite for discerning rose stalkers. So you can offer the whole package? Yep. Beautiful place. Yep. Good food the family, good hunting yeah. for most of the year. It's absolutely brilliant. And so you forgot good wine. Good wine. Sorry, because in France you, have you always have good wine. Some... Not a bad pad to retire to after a hard day on the bucks. Gregoire owns it and will guide us this evening. We know he's also keen to show us his pride and joy. 
It's warm in the late evening sunshine and the boar are unlikely to start moving for a bit. But, as we know, they do tend to congregate near food and Gregoire has a lot of duck to feed on his lake. So frightening all, frighten all the ducks, it's too close to them. Yes. It couldn't be simpler, you'd have thought, but no, our guide says no. He doesn't want the boom of Tim's Steyermanlicher scaring the waterfowl. It would have been such a nice simple start, but maybe there's another reason for us to hold fire. Holding court on pasture above the lake is the biggest rack we have ever seen. Si un client tombe amoureux, bien évidemment qu'on va pas l'empêcher de le tirer. Et, et toi, tu vas pas... Comment Non, bah après c'est la chasse, hein, je comprends. Si monsieur voulait le tirer, je lui aurais pas dit non, par exemple. Ah, il a dit que si vous voulez le tirer, vous ne vous avez pas dit non. Vraiment C'est juste que le Jimmy Lewis est en train de voir. 10,000 euros. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Mais est-ce que c'est le plus grand stack dans l'arrière Uh, c'est le plus grand. Uh, oui, c'est le plus beau qu'on ait ici. Oui. It's on this estate, it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. On, a, on a des serres uh, qui, qui font 16 ou 18, mais qui sont bien plus jeunes, oui. qui n'ont que 4 ou 5 ans. Là, c'est le deuxième qu'on a vu. C'est un cerf qui a 3 ans, c'est une deuxième tête, mais oui. il porte 16 déjà. Et le plus jeune qu'on a vu, il a only 3 ans et il a déjà 16 points. Donc, il a un peu d'autres deers qui sont très beaux, mais il va les laisser vraiment grands et old. Il must être très, très proud de his mm. Of his deer stock, yeah. Uh, vous devez être très fier de votre. Uh, ah oui, uh, j'espère yeah. qu'il va bien reproduire yeah. surtout. <laughs> He hopes that he's going to reproduce well. Ah bah, <laughs> well, 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 and we see the reds, and we've seen, we've seen you know, quite a variety of boar as well, so it's, it's, well, it hasn't been a successful day from a hunting point of view. I think it just demonstrates the variety of, of game and quality game we have in this, this area of France, in this long area. So um, I think it's time for us to probably pack up and um, go and find something else over here which is very, very tasty, very, very of high quality, and that's the wine. The following day, Tim is put through his paces on the driven boar target with both the Steyr Zeiss V8 combo and Desiree's new bow. We spend with my friends, with my partner, we spend a lot of time to, to educate people, to teach them, because if they are well equipped and well trained, they will be very efficient on the ground. You know, it's not like a running a roe deer or hind like that. It's always the same level regarding the, the ground. So my opinion is easier from behind. You just cross it and you shoot when you are around the head or if it's very far away, if you are at 100 meters, you have, my opinion, you have to shoot one meters ahead. So from behind, you cross it and you shoot when you feel it's okay and you keep going. If they are scared to shoot or they are, if they don't, uh, if they are not able to recognize the size of the wild boar, they are, they will not enjoy the day and the bottom line is not going to be a good deal for them and for me. So we, we really take care of people because we can handle a small party starting with three, four people. We can make a drive for three, four people till 12 to uh, 20 people. So I mean, we really take care. For this evening's talk, we are with JP. And don't think this bountiful boar boudoir isn't a challenge. The wind is changing all the time and these animals are not stupid.
The shot appeared good, but he's charged off into the thick stuff. Ignore the dot of the shot cam as it hasn't been adjusted for the rifle. The problem we got is gosh, it's quite thick over there and it's getting quite dark. And uh, what JP is suggesting we do is actually uh, we leave it because board just tend to keep on running all the time. So we're better off actually leaving it for maybe 15 minutes, half an hour, then go to it. But um, the uh, light's going to go by then. So I think he's just trying to see if he can find a dog for us. <coughs> As a shooter, it's really frustrating because you just want to get in there and see where, see where the beast is. If it needs uh, dispatching, we can do it very quickly, but um, we can't do it in this, in this thick bracken and brush. But uh, so as, a, as a hunter, it's, it's your worst case scenario because it could well be just in there, dead. It felt like a good shot. But uh, obviously, we've got to be a wee bit careful. We've got to just listen to uh, these experts. So it's a waiting game which is uh, not easy if you're a hunter. We pick up the trail first light in the morning. JP and Desiree come prepared. She's brought her German wirehead pointers. They are not usually worked as tracking dogs, but they are today. Last night we had um, the light was dropping. We were looking for blood trails. We couldn't see anything, so we decided to um, to bail out. But um, this morning is obvious. There's a blood trail here, so um, perhaps we could have pursued and, and and followed the beast. But the decision was not to, obviously, because of the failing light. So it's a good sign anyway. Hopefully we can um, keep this trail going. The dogs obviously picked up something as well, which is really encouraging. I think some blood down here. So anyway, fingers crossed. After 10 minutes, Marcus has earned his breakfast. For Tim, it's a massive relief. In the well done. <laughs> yeah, well done. Kind of that was brilliant. But when he was turning like this, that, yeah, because yeah. he's very clear when he finds something, he's mm. like a machine. But then he was turning, he's like, ah, oh, where is the angle? He was... And then he got here and was like, you have to trust the dog, so, so even an old boy can make it. <laughs> 30 meters he ran from uh, the place where you shot, yeah. but thanks to the dog below on the sick place, it would have been very hard to find it. Mm. If possible, I recommend and such an animal, if you Morph. can really... You can really eat for the shoulder, yeah. or even here. Yeah. Uh, you will, uh, you will put him down. And uh, but that is a very good shot, and the wild boar is there. Is not, is not a pasture. No. It's a male of maybe uh, less than two years, but it's a male, and uh, we we did find it, and uh, and I can say just. Uh, Congratulations yeah, thank to you, you. <laughs> and a good time. Thanks very yeah, yeah. much for this year and uh, yeah. thank you very much. Anyway, grab all this. Yeah, it's just one of those situations you have in the hunting sometimes. We took a shot last night, we couldn't find the beast. I was concerned, didn't have much of a sleep. I think, oh God, I've, I've, I've kind of made a mistake, wrong shot placement. Yeah, the shot reaction was okay, but we couldn't really see it on camera. And it's such a, a, a great feeling to, to next morning is to get out there with the dogs and actually find it. Think, yes, it was a, a, a good shot. Um, perhaps with wild boar, uh, well, I must learn that I've got to keep you know, aiming further forward in the shoulder. I tend to be a bit of a deer hunter and just shoot just behind the shoulder, <laughs> aim further forward. I've just got to program myself to just naturally do that while not doing that. But yes, the, the thoughts were actually going through there and actually finding the beast and seeing it there, I think, well, 
you know, it was it ran 30 meters. It was a reasonably clean kill. So actually, it's a, it's a, great, a great result. But you just go through that process of self-doubt. Should I take the shot? I was getting, it was getting late in the day. I was tired. Uh, it been a long day, and I was thinking, oh, perhaps I should have declined the shot. I took it on, rightly or wrongly, and obviously it's, it's, I did the right thing in the end, but in this situation, perhaps, you know, a better shot placement, they would have just dropped it. And when he gets right to the end of the day, having that deer or that ball running off is worst case scenario, but uh, all in all, it's worked out brilliantly. Lovely 60 kilogram beast, or healthy beast, and everyone's happy, so uh, overall, it's great, so I'm, I'm really pleased. And also see a follow-up, you know, see the dogs work. They're not natural kind of bloodhounds, um, but they did their bit. They got slightly confused. They actually went through, we stopped and let them kind of settle a wee bit and they persevered and, and they found it. So uh, all in all, a really, really, it's a good way to start the day perhaps. So we're going to go back out there and hopefully find some more boar. For more information about Harkila clothing and kit, go to harkila.com. And for more information about Steyr Manlicher rifles, go to steyr-manlicher.com. Thank you to JP and Desiree who looked after Tim and David magnificently. Great French hospitality. Now from get -a fix to the man with all the vital statistics, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Bentley is firing on all cylinders. Its new £160,000 4x4 comes with a complete shooting fit out for another £10,000. Called the Bentayga Field Sports, the build is done by Mulliner, the British car maker's customising arm. In the past, Mulliner has created the Bentayga Fi Fishing and the Bentayga Falconry. The Field Sports Edition has compartments for ammunition, a hunting knife, binoculars, champagne, and for this publicity photo shoot, a pair of Purdies that cost more than the car. The BBC has published a pro hunting article. Yes, you heard it right. It's buried deep in the BBC News' website, but it's definitely pro shooting. The article tells the story of Christine Cunningham, who with her partner Steve Mayer, is a subsistence hunter in Alaska. The BBC article explains how hunters harvest animals in a reverent and sustainable manner. Safari Club International has a new presence in the UK. The SCI London chapter launched at Holland & Holland's shooting ground in West London. The event was open to current SCI members and opened its account by raising funds by auctioning gifted hunts, books and shooting lessons. I feel our opportunity is to, is to try and make people aware that, that hunting is, is not only ethical but of huge benefit to communities, particularly in countries like uh, of Africa, and to those species that we hunt. And that by putting value on, on those animals, it actually is the true way to sustain those species and, and a genuine contribution to conservation. This was a great social event, but also we've been able first time to communicate to them what Safari Club International is doing, and that we've been able to communicate to them what we plan to do. Yeah, it's a good start. Please can you help us out by filling out a survey? This is especially for people in the UK, and it's an international clothing company. They've managed to get 3,000 people in Scandinavia to fill it out, and 600 people in the German-speaking nations, but only 300 Brits. There are prizes to be won and it only takes five minutes. Visit bit.ly forward slash hunting clothing survey. The Antis have a new poster girl. Petter is using YouTube star Teela Dunn, age 20, from New Jersey who posed nude, apart from body paint, for a campaign protesting about the use of animal fur in the clothing industry. The campaign was released by Petter 2, Petter's division aimed at spreading the organization's message to younger folk. And finally, hunting and shooting is a great leveller, as many faiths have come together over a dog. Rock art found in Saudi Arabia shows what appears to be a Canaan dog, Israel's national breed, used in organised hunts. The 8,000-year-old engraving shows men with dogs on leads. As well as pictures of cattle, they appear to be hunting an early horse, and it's young in one picture and a lion in another. You are an up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, Fishing for facts. 
Thank you, David. Now, if you're thinking about what to get a budding shooter for Christmas, Daisy air guns are now available in the UK. Next up, we begin a series with three generations of the same family who like nothing better than to work the beating line. The beating line is the beating heart of driven shooting. To celebrate that fact, we are hearing from three generations of the same family who spend as many days as they can working with Paul Childerley on his two shoots in Bedfordshire. Beaters are actually probably the key to like running the shoot, really. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't let me hear that, yeah. Um, but yeah, without those guys and the pickers up and the beaters, you know, doing, doing those bits, you know, guns haven't got a day. It's a military operation because everything's got to come together right, right at the right time and try and produce some good sport, that's, that's the key to it. We have Jack, Richard and Peter. One's retired, one's a mechanic and the other knows exactly what he wants to do in life. But gamekeeping is definitely... That's the job I want to do, yeah, and that won't change. During the season, we'll hear from all three of them and gauge the reaction to Peter's Zealand attire. He has agreed to take on the challenge of being our social experiment. Does Blaze Orange have a place in the UK beating line? Results in a few weeks' time. Please add your comments in the usual places. Right, Jack, tell us how to do this. Uh, so basically, we're all going to go to the wood and line out and then we're going to bring that wood down. And then we're going to, I think the guns are going to line up there with the try lists. I think we're going to do it different because people that are trialling the dogs can see where the birds are going. Are you pretty professional these days? Uh, well, yeah, Nick and Scott give me parts of the line to run. Do you like that responsibility? Uh, yeah, because it makes me look grown up and, <laughs> I like, and I like the job really and it makes me happy because I can do it and I just like showing everyone that I can do it really. I mean, he started out at nine years of age, and now he's thirteen. He could, he could, he could run a, you know, the keepers let him run a drive. He could run a drive of a team of, you know, fully grown men, adults, and uh, he knows where to put them now. Makes you proud. Very proud. Yeah, yeah. You know, he fills your eyes up sometimes. You know how he's come on, and uh, yeah, really, really proud of him. Fantastic. Yeah. So we're going to the lake, and Nick will put his dog in and get all the ducks up and maybe one or two of us will be out here flagging up the ducks so they go as high and so the ones can shoot them really. Um, some of us will go around onto the grass strip and just flag up the pheasants or ducks that go out that side of the guns. Joining the shoot today is the Chilton Gun Dog Society. Their novice stake is sponsored by Skinners. As part of the beating line, Zealand's given Jack their Ragley range to field to test. For him, it's not just functional, it makes him feel part of team field sports. It's really comfortable, it keeps you warm. These are really nice, the breeks. And this coat's got loads of pockets. And um, when I get these clothes on, I feel like I'm ready to beat and I'm just so excited for the day and see what's going to happen, really. Uh, I just save it and uh, at the end of the season I either put it in my bank or spend it on beating clothes or cartridges or a day out shooting or clay shooting really. Not many teenage boys have an Xbox gathering dust or are confident enough to manage a group of grown-ups, but that's what beating has given Jack. For more information about Zealand clothing go to zealand.com and for more information about the range of Skinner's working dog food go to skinnerspetfoods.co.uk Thank you to Jack and a shout out to everyone, young and old, who make the whole thing work. Now from the field to the footage, it's Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. 260 Rips has a 20 minute plus episode out about thermal foxing, varminting and decoying crows. Expect his mix of long range advice put into practice on vermin. More education from County Deer Stalking, which has brought out a two part film called Scotland Red Deer Stalking Special. This is part one of two. We have visited Wonder Heart hunting in Hungary in the past. Here is their film about wild boar hunting in 2017, which is getting good views on YouTube. Robin Foxer sends me his film about flight pond shooting with lots of tips as well as shooting action. Outdoor Limits is somewhere in North America on his first goose hunt of the season. He is decoying Canada's on a bean field. Viewer Tim Van Heerden, who runs Karoo Wing Shooting in South Africa, sends me his preview of the wing shooting season in South Africa. Viewer Howie Halliday from New Zealand sends me his latest video of his two spaniels and his farming friend's German wirehead pointer hunting rabbits in Otago. And finally, lots of driven hunts are underway across Europe. Here is a Monteria in El Carascozo, a hunting estate in Spain, posted by Juan de Dios Bonilla. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Or best of all, you can pop your email address into our constant contact page, our register page. We'll contact you about this show, which comes out every week, 7 p.m. UK time. And it's called Field Sports Britain. And this has been Field Sports Britain, which for some reason, known only to me, is coming to you this week from Corsica. Details of that in a future show. Good hunting.